Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I'm going to show you how to use the humble soft chalk pastel with water to make messy, dramatic pages. This video is not going to be about drawing with chalk pastels per se, mainly because I don't know how to do that. What I do know how to do is mix pastels with water to make bold focal points and mark making. Mark making, which is really good for embellishing your uh, finished pages or for filling in spaces uh, in your pages. You can, of course, use plain paper with anything we're going to do today. But I have made an effort to show the, the drawings on mixed papers so that you can see that this technique is bold enough to stand up to them and you can think about integrating them more into your own work. If you like art journals, journal arts, mixed media, and old books and paper, please subscribe to my YouTube channel because I've got a lot of them. Chalk pastels are one of my favorite art supplies. They are very affordable and surprisingly versatile. For instance, did you even know that you can use them as a water soluble? So there you go. Today I'm going to show these techniques using these pastels are Stettler and these are Dela Rowney. And uh, I found these both in a thrift store that is a charity shop. And um, I'm going to show you the, the cover of the Dela Rowney because they come in these incredible autumn colors in case you want to go out and look for those. You should. I am also going to show using some of these. And these are super cheap, cheap, cheap broken bibs and bobs from the broken bibs and bob pastel box. So use what you got. Currently, I am working on a an online course on water solubles, using water solubles in your pages. So please look for that. It's coming soon. Traditionally, when you use a water soluble, you put your color onto your paper. This is a wax crayon. Then you add your liquid, which is usually water, and that activates the color and you can start working with that. With the chalk pastel, it's, it's different though. You want to get your substrate wet. You want to get your page wet, not the chalk. So I'm just putting down some water here. This is how the pastel goes onto the paper when it's dry. This is how it goes onto the wet section here. And boy, drama. We have drama. Now let's try using that by making some flowers. On this old text. Now, when I'm gonna put the, the water down, I'm not gonna wet the whole page. What I'm gonna do is actually take my water and paint with the water the shape of a flower. And you're just going to have to trust me because I don't think it's going to show up on the camera. And uh, just pretend I'm using invisible ink or something. Now, what I'm doing is painting roughly the shape of some petals on a crown flower. And you know how much I love those. So now I'm going to take something. I'm going to use my purple and go in there. I'm going to have to lean into this so I can see where I, exactly I have painted the water. All right, so we're going to start with that. Now I'm going to take my brush and get it a little bit more wet and then actually work into the color and the petals here pulling that color out and softening it and shaping 
the petals. Let's see, let's add a little bit of And now I'm going to And again, you can soften that if you want. And I usually want. Now I'm going to go over here and with my water, I'm just going to draw just some vague heart-shaped petal shapes, just four or five of those. Trust me. Now, let's see, let's use, let's use this orange. And I'm just gonna paint some heart shapes into that, those little pools, those little puddles of water. And again, I'm going to shape them a little bit with a brush. So very much just an abstract posy. Let's add a little bit of that there. We're going to help that bleed into the flower a little bit. And that already looks really, really, really good. But if you want to, you can take a damp brush and pull that out a little bit so that you get an effect where the petals are paler on the edge. And that just gives you another, another look. Now, I'm gonna go over to this other side and make some abstract roses. Um, these are very abstract and what I'm going to do is use my water to paint the, sh the, the shape of a spiral basically. And it's just paint like that but as I go further and further on the out the arms of the spiral I will make my uh, my lines a little bit wider. So let's start here. I'm just going to go paint in a spiral. So leaving plenty of negative space between the arms of the spiral. And I'm pulling that right out, getting wider and wider. Now I'm going to use one of my cheap broken pieces here. And start drawing into the spiral like this getting a little bit wider as i go now again if you wanted to use that for some mark making as is it's fantastic i would use that for a lot of stuff but i'm actually going to take my damp the brush has just got some water on it and now you can pick that color up and really work with it and blend in, leaving some places lighter, some places darker. Leave a little bit of that negative space. And again, outside here, use some water, lots of water to pull that out and make nice, big, lousy petals. Or maybe they're just fancy balloons. But anyway, they're beautiful. I'm going to do one more. Because I want to show the same effect, but how really, really dramatic it can be if you use a nice, light, subtle tone. This is, uh, I don't know what color that is, but it's, it's very, very, very subtle. Just the lightest pink you can imagine, like a linen color pink. I'm just 
using that to go in, in, in to the water, in the spiral. And again, go around and pick up that color. And I don't know why, but this, this color for making a really subtle rose, I just really, really like it. Maybe because most of the other colors are going to really be really bold. This one's one of the few colors that's subtle that, that works. I'm actually going to go in with a slightly darker pink now. And a little bit of contrast. Not much. Now work around just into that, some, into that negative space. And you have a completely different kind of rose. Now I'm going to show how to make this abstract stone arch. This is not a very precise architectural rendering. It is, however, a pretty darn good page. So let's look at that. This is over some text, and here it's over some handwriting. What I'm going to show it on now is an echo print. And this is from one of a page from one of my boiled books. And if you'd like to see more, learn more about how the boiled books are made, there's a link to that in the text below this video. Or just ask. Now, in this case, I am going to go ahead and paint the whole page rather than just the outline of a figure because this is really, really abstract. Now, I'm going to take, let's see, this is like a dark, very dark gray. And I'm making a door here. That's it. I'm going to take a different gray brown and just go in here and suggest some arch shapes just like that and add a little bit down there let's see this is kind of a purpley purpley color Now I am going to take my brush and work into that and soften it up even more. So it's looking mysterious. So I'm going to add a little bit of a a shadow here and maybe here and just don't don't overthink it make it messy and pretty and make it make you happy I'm just gonna go up here and add a little bit more a little bit more archiness And pull that color right out. Again, you're just suggesting shadows and plenty of background. And there you go. Finally, let's talk about mark making. Mark making is a fancy way of saying doodling. It is a fantastic technique though for adding color contrasting color, and really making your pages pop. So I'm just going to show you a very, very simple uh, way of drawing mark making. And this is in one of my mini boiled books. And if you'd like to see these, the there's a link below that will take you there. I'm drawing with water, just an oval, just a very, very, very basic bird's egg shape. I love bird's eggs in my pages. I'm just going to soften that a little. 
and then maybe add a couple little dots there so it looks kind of weak there we go now i'm going to draw with my water some super bold wavy messy lines and i'm going to use com contrasting blues to work into that just add some 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 dots here because why not So basically you're just drawing into the water with shapes that make you happy. Or you can use some stencils, which if you've seen my art journal pages, you know is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite go-to techniques for finishing a page. This is one of my art journal pages. And after the whole thing was done, I used soft pastels and stencils just to add a little bit of a little bit of oomph and what that does is it adds interest it also adds texture now this is a Tim Holtz stamp the first thing you want to do stencil sorry is get your page get your stencil where you want your little uh, little pieces to come up and I'm, I'm using a spritzer filled with water make this light do not make your page really 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 uh, wet just lightly damp color over and you can see it doesn't look like it's really gone into the page until you work it in you can wear gloves if it if you like doing this part i i just wing it and there we go and I like to make it patchy, so I not matchy matchy, but patchy. So I go ahead and pull it right out. And there's what you have. Nice, messy mark making. This does work with a more traditional stencil. This is just one that came from the sale rack. And I have used it so many times. So let's take something from the broken box. And again, a beautiful addition to any page. I hope this has given you some ideas and also shown you that yes, you can use text and mixed papers in your pages. If you would like to try handwritten papers, I have some free scans to these vintage handwritten pieces and they're on my website. The link to that is below this video, so go get them. Also on my website, you can subscribe to my newsletter. It goes out monthly and it has free paper scans, tutorials, and a boatload of fun stuff. So please sign up and please let me know if you have any questions or feedback in the comments below. Until next week, get up and go make something.